Come on, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good to see everyone this morning. Amen, amen. I'm not a woman, but I'm going to come and, come and check out what's going on. Amen. You know, I can, I can, I can learn a thing or two. Whenever women are gathered together like that, it's always powerful. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You are Alpha and Omega. You may believe Jesus is the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. He has the first word. He has the final word. But he also has every word in between. So while I see that, I want to just sing this song and just worship. Open our hearts to him. Let him speak to us this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Omega. Tell him that. We, we worship you. thank you this morning father we thank you our hearts rejoice at the opportunity the privilege of being counted and numbered as children of God father the honor to be here this morning we don't take it for granted we don't take life for granted Lord we don't take this opportunity to be alive and strong and healthy to be able to raise up our voices and give you glory. Father, we count it a privilege. It is an honor. We thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for the breath of life. Thank you for family. Thank you for friends, for loved ones. Thank you, oh God, for your plans concerning our lives. You said, I know the plans I have concerning you. They are plans of good, not of evil. To give you a hope and a future. 
We thank you for a hope and a future in you. We thank you for an expected end. We thank you, Lord, for that which you have already prepared for us. For the Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Lord, we thank you because you have prepared for us. You have pre prepared marvelous, great things for us, for our lives, for our destinies, for our future. Lord, we give you glory. Dear Holy Spirit, we ask you this morning to inspire us, empower every life, speak to every heart, challenge every thought process, every mindset. Lord, open our hearts to embrace the ways of God. We give you glory. Thank you for open doors, for breakthroughs, for testimonies. Lord, you know the hidden concern of every heart. Lord, may you meet every need this morning. In the name of Jesus, may worries be stilled. Lord, may, may racing minds be, oh God, receive rest. May bodies be healed, eyes open, ears open to hear you. And let the name of Jesus be glorified. In Jesus' name, you believe that, say amen. Come on now, I want to hear you say amen this morning. You know, while I was praying this morning in the office, I hear the Lord say to me, I'm doing a new thing. Hallelujah. There are people who have been in circles and cycles, but they're not moving forward. I'm doing a new thing in your life. In the name of Jesus. In Isaiah 43 verse 18, he said, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Hallelujah. I said, God is speaking to you. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Somebody say now. Come on, say now it's springing forth. He said, I will even make a way in the wilderness. He said, in other words, in, it, things may get really hard and difficult. He said, even in the wilderness, I can make a way. Come on, I said, even in the wilderness, he can make a way. Even when there is no hope. Of any refreshment, no what, no provision. He said, I can still make a way. Once you put your trust in God, the Bible says, they that put their trust in God can never be put to shame. Uh, if you're believing God, trust me, if you're truly handing things over to God, God tell somebody, God, God's got you. God's got you. Hallelujah. He will never fail. Hallelujah. He will never fail. He said, I will, I, I will even make a way in the wilderness. And I will make rivers in the desert. I said, I will make rivers in the desert. Maybe your business is not moving the way it should. Maybe your health is not where it's supposed to be. And you, you know, maybe things are not where they're supposed to be in your consideration. The Lord says, I can make rivers in the desert. And he's doing that this morning. Come on, I said he's doing that this morning. In the name of Jesus. I want you to stand on your feet for one minute. Let's just pray a little bit before we get into this. Hallelujah. If you're watching online, you're welcome. Go ahead and share the video. Invite somebody. Hallelujah. Somebody says, it's a new season in my life. I'm declaring that prophetically. It says, it's a new season in my life. Come on, say, things are changing. There's a shift happening. <clears throat> things are moving around. And they're all working for my good. In the name of Jesus, say with me today, I decree that I'm divinely transferred into a new and glorious season. In the name of Jesus, I want to open your mouth and pray, say, I'm transferred into a new season. Look at that situation, say, I'm transferred from here to there. Hallelujah. My life is moving from this experience to that experience. My family is moving from here to there. Things are moving and working for my good. My health is turning around. My business is turning around. Father, we thank you this morning. Things are working for our good. The things that have been stagnated, Lord, you are moving them forward. We are moving into a new season. My life is moving into a new season. My health is moving in. Hallelujah. Into a place of stability. Hallelujah. I'm experiencing the will of God for my life in the name of Jesus. Everything that has stood before me to hinder me into the plan of God is giving way. It is a new day. It is a new season in my life in the name of Jesus. I take authority over anything that has stood before before me to hinder the will of God. May the will of God come to pass in my life. In the name of Jesus. Come and say with me. In the name of Jesus. I command all the cycles of trouble. And hindrance. 
to cease in the name of Jesus. Come on, open your mouth and pray. Every cycle of trouble, every cycle of trouble, every cycle of hindrance, every cycle of disappointment, I command it in the name of Jesus to cease right now in the name of Jesus. You are the one to pray for it in the name of Jesus. Every cycle of failure, every cycle of frustration in the name of Jesus, may it cease right now. May it cease right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The saying goes, if there is a man to pray, there is a God to answer. Hallelujah. If there is a woman to pray, there is a God to answer. Hallelujah. Every disappointment, may it cease. Every turbulent waters, may I say, peace be still. In the name of Jesus. Say with me in the name of Jesus. I enter into a season of peace. I enter into a season of prosperity. I enter into a season of blessings and fruitfulness. Come and take one minute to declare that upon your life. In the name of Jesus, I step into a season of peace. I step into a season of prosperity. I step into a season of fruitfulness on every side, in every area, in every way. In the name of Jesus, this is my time. This is my hour. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke every fruitlessness. I rebuke every stagnation. I rebuke, hallelujah, anything that seemed to be the opposite of the will of God for my life in the name of Jesus. Say, in the name of Jesus, I bind the works of darkness. Hallelujah. I bind the works of darkness. I bind the plans of the enemy against my life and my destiny. I bind all the strategies, all the manipulations and maneuvers of the enemy against my life, against my future, against God's plan for me. In the name of Jesus, I speak the will of God concerning me. I speak the will of God concerning my academics. I speak the will of God concerning my health. I speak the will of God concerning my children my family, my loved ones. I speak the will of God concerning my job. No, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm advancing into greater days. I'm advancing into greater days. I'm advancing in the greater days. It is my season to shine. It is my season to shine. Come on, say that like you mean it. Pray. May it be a prayer. Come on, say it's my season to shine. It's my season to shine. Hallelujah. It's a brighter season. A brighter day is upon me. A brighter season is upon my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Darkness has been rolled back. Hallelujah. Darkness has been rolled back. In the name of Jesus the light of God is shining upon my life father thank you your countenance is shining upon my life every darkness is giving way hallelujah the glory of God is rising upon me in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah in a multitude hallelujah your hand is upon my life in the name of Jesus Don't take things for granted. I tell you that. I, I, I mean it. Don't take things for granted. Even if the word of God has said it, you have to enforce it. Things don't just happen. It never, they never do. They never do. You can't just sit and things happen. They never do. You, even if the word of God has said it, you have to take it and enforce it in prayer. Amen? You have to because that's why we pray with the word of God. I encourage you when you pray, use the word of God. You're pushing limits when you use the word of God. Because whenever you use the word of God in faith, you are entering realms where Jesus walked. I'm telling you, because he made sure he stayed with the word of God. He said, I speak nothing of my own. That's strategy. Even when the enemy tried to make him to do something else, he said, No, no, no. It is written. He made sure he kept the narrow path like that and enforced it. How can the Son of God, the one who is pure and perfect, how can he take time to go fast for 40 days? For what? To enforce reality. You can't just fold your arms and say, you know, God has said, you know, 
It's going to happen. You'll be surprised. And then you start saying, but I thought, I thought. No, yes, you thought, but it's not just thinking. You have to enforce it. Even after God had declared that thou art my beloved son, Jesus still had to go pray for 40 days and fast. Jesus, what about you? He could have just gone and said, you know, God said I'm wonderful. I'm, he's well pleased with me. Hallelujah. It wouldn't have worked. He had to take that reality and go enforce it in prayer. Say, this is who I am and it must be so. And of course, the enemy showed up to challenge that. He said, ah, it can't be so. He said, it will be so. Hallelujah. Come and say, it will be so for me. So whatever God has said concerning me will surely come to pass. You can have your seats. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Don't play, don't let the enemy deceive you to play that, 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 that game. That game, you just fold your arms. You know, people always say, if it's God's will, it's going to happen. God's will has not happened in a lot of people. While you hope, you just fold it. There's some, somebody fighting that God's will should not happen. Because you forget that you have an adversary. You forgot it. And you got deceived in this, this, this illusion that, you know, everything's just going to fall in place. It's not true. We have the victory, no, no doubt. It's been signed and delivered. But for you to lay hold of it, man, you have to apply yourself. Amen? And if you do apply yourself, trust me, it will surely come to pass. The word of God does not lie. Amen? It does not lie. It will surely come to pass. Amen. Let's finish our, 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 you know, our journey in the book of Acts. Amen. We're finishing it this morning. Amen. The, the Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit in the lives of ordinary people. Amen. How, how the Holy Spirit took the lives of ordinary people and made it extraordinary. Oh, I love it. I love it. It, it means it don't matter. It really does not matter. It does not matter what the past has been. What the previous experience was, if the Holy Spirit can take hold of your life, He will make you what God has said concerning you. Jesus was not worried. He saw Peter. He, he, he said, Follow me, I will make you. Amen. He didn't say, You know, I, I wish I wish I met you when you were, you know, Peter was, was not a teenager. He didn't say, I wish I met you when you were 15 or 14. You know, He said, Just follow. I will make you. Your, your responsibility is to follow. My job is to make. You are not the one making yourself. He said, follow me. I will make you. In other words, he, there, there, is, there is a design he has concerning your life. There is a plan. There is a blueprint that he has concerning you. But if you don't yield to him, that blueprint may not, never manifest. That's just unfortunate that a lot of people who have lived through this life, they have lived through, they have passed through, but they never lived out the, the, the will of God for their life, unfortunately. They just live their own life, whatever they designed. And it may look successful, but it may not be God's, God's will. Not that it's against God's will, but you may just cheat yourself, cheat yourself out of God's best. There is more to you than you know. Come on, I said there's more to your life than you know. God's will for you is to, is to go all the way and, and lay hold of every blessing that's available. Amen? And your life be what he wants it to be. Amen? Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 16, he, 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 said, he, said, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. You know that, right? I will, I will, I will, come, I will, I will come to you. I will pray the Father. I told you before, Jesus said, I will pray the Father. To show you the importance, you know, the word I will pray, I said it before, it means I will, I will entreat the Father. I will, I will plead with the Father. It means that the Holy Spirit is dear to the Godhead. Because the Godhead is sustained by the Holy Spirit. Ah. 
The relationship between the Father and the Son is sustained by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the bond of that union. Whatever the Father is thinking is in the mind of the Son at the same time. By the Holy Spirit. If the Father has a thought concerning your life, immediately that thought is in the mind of the Son. By the Holy Spirit. It means that if you, your life is aligned with the Holy Spirit like that, it means whatever the Father is thinking about you can enter your mind. Uh, so he is the perfection of that union. So Jesus knew. That is why Jesus, after living 30, 30 years, 30 years, perfect 30 years. You, your mind cannot even think of a man who is perfect at 30. Your mind don't have that capacity. Because your mind is, is limited. A man who has lived for 30 years, no flaw. Yet, he still needed the Holy Spirit. I want to show you something. I mean, can you imagine that. He didn't, it's not like, he, you know, man, I'm, I'm real struggling. You know, I'm, I'm real, I, I really need, no, no, no. He's a perfect man. But he still needed the Holy Spirit. That tells you something. No wonder he said, hey, I'm about to leave, but I don't want to leave you without help. In other words, he's about to pass to them the secret of his life. The way I have lived my life and you see the success, the results, I'm about to give you the secret. He said, I will pray the Father. You know why he's praying there? Because the father is going to say, you know, no, are you sure? Not that the father don't know, but you know, this is the communication. But you know, they won't value the Holy Spirit like that. Are you sure? He said, I've shed my blood for them. I will pray that he will give you. Because Jesus' prayers are always answered. I say his prayers are always answered. Come on, I say his prayers are always answered. That's why he told you to pray in his name. So your prayers are always answered. I know you've been taught that, you know, at times you pray, God will say. <laughs> I know that's in your, in, in your consciousness. They always answer. They may be, you know, they may be answered differently, but they're always answered. Because Jesus told us in, in John 11, he said, Father, thank you because you hear me always when I pray. Somebody say always. Come on, somebody say always. It's not sometimes. Whenever we pray with the word of God in the name of Jesus, it must be answered. You did, you did not make that up. God told you what to do. First John chapter 4 verse 15, he said, If you ask anything according to his will, and this is his will, it is the word. If you ask anything according to his will, he hears you. And if you know that he hears you, you know that you have the petitions that you ask of him. Why do we make it so complicated? And I'm t for the most part, church has helped to complicate it. We formed our own ways and added to it. He told you, if you ask anything according to his will, he hears. Now, it means if you ask not according to his will... He's not obliged. He's not obligated to do anything. But if it's according to his will, which you find in the word, he said he hears you. And he went on to say, if you know that he hears you, then you are sure that you have the petition that you asked. Wouldn't that make you want to pray? Come on, nobody needs to say, man, we need to pray. Nobody needs to tell you that. You say, man, this is an opportunity. But now what if you pray, pray, pray and nothing happens? Even though it's according to his will. You know what to do. I told you before, this kind. Someone say this kind. You add fasting to it. This kind coming not but by prayer and fasting. So if I'm praying the will of God, nothing is happening yet. Hey, I have another tool to add to it. We have everything it takes. 
He has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. All things. Somebody say all things. You are not lacking in anything. Come and say you are not lacking in anything. I know maybe your mama told you growing up that you are... <laughs> you don't amount to anything. But I say, I say you are not lacking in anything. You have all it takes to succeed. Maybe in school, you know, you grew up with you know, that peer pressure. You tried to fit in, you could not, and you fell out and defined your own niche. Where you can never amount to this and that and that. Somebody say it's a lie. Say it's a lie. You have everything it takes to make it and to make it big. You're not listening to me. I say everything. He's giving you all things. I say you will make it big. You must succeed in this life. You must fulfill God's will for your life in the name of Jesus. Listen, let me just help you. Ideas that pop up into your mind, especially when your life is aligned with God. These things are not complicated like that. When your life is aligned, that's why I encourage you. Don't, don't, don't live that kind of Christian life where you do things last minute. You know, by intervention mechanism. No, just live your life with God. Study the Bible. Just develop a life of spending time with God. If you live like that, the thoughts that come into your mind will be from God. The Bible said the thoughts of the righteous are perfect. Oh. We make it too technical. You'll be thinking, God will be thinking in your head. Ideas will come. There will be ideas that he's giving you to succeed with. Don't the Bible tell you you have the mind of Christ? Where is the mind of Christ? In your mind. You don't have to look for it from anywhere. It's in your mind. The mind of Christ is in you. He didn't say you will have it in the rapture in the sweet by and by. He said, you have, you have, you have right now, present tense, you have the mind of Christ. In other words, you can think what Christ is thinking. Okay, let me put it for modern people. You have the, you have the operating system that Christ is using. Uh, you have it. The only time you will, be, you will be out of sync is when you're living your life your own way too much. It will be hard for you to access the thoughts of Christ. You'll be thinking your own things. But if your life is aligned, it may not be 100%, but for a lot, in a lot, a lot of times, the thoughts that will pop up, especially thoughts that you did not premeditate, You'll be going somewhere and an idea will just come in. It didn't, you didn't think it. It will be God telling you. Uh, tell somebody I must make it. If you fail, the angels are waiting for you with a weep. If you know what, how much Christ has done. The Bible says even the angels long to look into it. They wonder, they're amazed at the sacred, the redemptive work of Christ. They're amazed. They're amazed at what is available to us. You have to maximize that. Amen? Say, it will be so for me. Come on, say, it will be so for me. The Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, Jesus knew that the secret of my life is the Holy Spirit. I told you, John 14, he, he said, my father, he called him my father. You know that. Oh, you didn't know that. He called the Holy Spirit my father. The Holy Spirit is his father. The physical Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is your father too. When the angel came to Mary, the angel told him, when, when he, he, the angel prophesied to Mary, the Mary asked an honest question, how can this be? There is no natural avenue for this to be possible. Seeing I know not a man. You know that, right? No, there's no way naturally, biologically speaking, for this to happen. 
No man had heard what the angel is going to say before. No man had heard it in the entire history of humankind. So she's wondering like, there's no reference for it. The angel said, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. So he said, hey, all the impossibilities can become possible by the Holy Spirit. Your business can go to the next level by the Holy Spirit. Your life can move from where it is to the next level by the Holy Spirit. You can go to school by the Holy Spirit. I tell you, the desire of my heart is to see Christianity real practical. Not on, in church on Sunday. But in, at work, at school, everywhere. I told you, you, you said before, I've told, you know, I, I took board exams by the Holy Ghost. I'm not saying don't study, but you know, I was a busy man. I'm, I was real busy. Not that it's an excuse. But I, look, I know God is still my father. So I held him, you know. I'm about to take a board exam for, for the benefit of those who have never heard. I'm about to take a board exam. It's 300 questions. I think two or three hours. Some, you know, I've been traveling and preaching all over the place. But life is busy. You know, my wife is here, so she can testify to that. So I registered. So I'm, I'm thinking, I've not studied. So a couple of weeks before the exam, I'm trying to call to cancel my registration. I haven't studied anything. They say it's too late. You can't cancel now. So I'm like, okay, my money is already there. I'll take it. So, I, you know, the night before the exam, the night before, I'm, I'm in the garage. I'm looking at all my college books. You know, my, you know I'm scouting, you know, boxes looking for notes. The night before. I'm thinking, I, I need to just, you know, I'm doing that for conscience sake. So I would say at least I studied something. You know, it's weird to just walk to an exam you have not looked at even the paper. You can fail just by psychology. So I'm, 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 I'm just struggling to look for notes. I'm like, man. So I just, I knew this is not going to work. So I just passed <laughs> So I used the night to pray. This is not a good approach. Don't use me for reference. <laughs> No, don't do that. So I, I prayed. I said, Father, look, there are too many things for me to do. I don't have time to fail. I can't take this exam again. In fact, I prayed and passed it in my prayer. Jesus said, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive it. He didn't say believe you will. He said, believe you receive it in your prayer. Then you shall have it. Oh, look at that. He didn't say pray and then wait. And then say, oh, I'm, I'm trusting God. I'm trying to, you see, this, this church folk are interested. Your tr what is trusting God? You pray and say, well, you said, I'm believing God. When? Whenever he decides. You will never walk by faith. Jesus said, when you pray, believe you receive it. He didn't say, watch to see if it has happened. That's, you see, we're mixing too many things. He said, when you pray, somebody said, when you pray. It's at that time. Now, if you don't receive it, pray until you receive something. Because when you receive it, you will know it. Ah, uh, I told you, I said the old school folk used to call it a note of victory. You pray until you have a note of victory in your heart. You know that you know that it's done. Even if you've not seen anything, there is an assurance within your heart that it's done. Otherwise, why would Peter be in Dorcas? Dorcas is dead. And Peter is in the next town, and they went and called him. Hey, Dorcas is dead. And Peter comes in, sends everybody out of the room, and went down on his knee to pray. 
When would he know when the prayer has been answered? And he prayed and got up and said, Dorcas, stand up. How did he know when the prayer was answered? Because there is a confidence within you when you have received it. There's a knowing. You may not be able to explain it, but there is an assurance that you have it. That's what Jesus said. When you pray, so you pray until there is that assurance. It may take one minute. It may be two days. For some people, it may be one month, but you must have the assurance. Once you have that assurance, your spirit man has taken hold of it. Nothing can take it from you. Hallelujah. I said nothing will be able to take it because your spirit man has it. It may not have manifested yet, but you know that you know that you know. That's when you start confessing with audacity. You see, that's where confession comes in. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you because this is happening. I have it in Jesus. See, you're speaking the word now with faith because you already have it in your heart. Everything about your life can work on the inside first. It has to work on the inside first before it happens on the outside. Because, you see, I know biology, if they open you, you won't see all the things the Bible talks about. Within you is the whole world. If God lives within you, it means that heaven is within you. Where do you think God is living? In your liver? <laughs> if we open you, we will not find God in there. Because biology cannot pinpoint where God is. So you are bigger than what biology tells you you are. Uh, I'm not saying biology is good. It gives us a lot of information. But it's limited. When you say Christ in me, where is Christ in you? If Christ is in you, it means everything about God is in you. Tell me now, listen to me. If that, is, if, if that really settles down, tell me how your life is going to be. Fear will not exist. I say fear will not exist. And that's why some, I feel like some of you are, you know, you, there's some of you, you want, you want to take a step in your life, but there's too much hesitation. There's a lot of fear. Of, of failure. I'm speaking to somebody. There's a lot of fear of failure. But I'm telling you this morning, your victory is in the step you have to take. Amen? I see your victory is in the step you have to take. Take it with boldness. For you're not alone in that step. Amen? I see you're not alone. I see you're not alone. Christ is in you. The whole of the Godhead is on the inside of you. The whole of the, so the Holy Spirit brings all of that presence on the inside of you. And that's why I told you, this man, he walked with them and took ordinary men. Ordinary, they were not the, the aristocrats of their day. They were not the high class people. They were lowly men. He took them and made them pillars of truth. He made them remarkable men that we're talking about today. And so will your life be in the name of Jesus. In the, Jesus said, my father that lives in me. My father that li- he doeth the works. He said, there's someone living in me. It's a consciousness. Amen? It's an awareness that you are not just you alone. There's someone. See, everything you do, you're aware. That Christ is in you. And if he's not in you this morning, he can live in you. You can say, Father, surrender my heart to you. Make it your home. Live within me. Live your life through me. I call on you to save me. Amen? Hallelujah. Acts chapter number number 13, verse 9. Acts chapter 13. That's the first. The first point is that. By the Holy Spirit, 
we can speak to obstacles. That's the first point. By the Holy Spirit, we can speak to hindrances and obstacles. The Bible said, then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Spirit, set his eyes on them. I told you the other week on, on Wednesday, you know, Paul is, is, is about to go out to preach, you know, in, in dangerous places, missionary trip, going to bar barbaric places where people have never heard the gospel. There's darkness. So he went to, you know, to, to you know, the king of this area, and the man had an advisor who was a witch doctor. Unfortunately, most leaders of nations have those kinds of people. So filled, he set his eye. You see, he, 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 was, he, he was aware and he was conscious that the Holy Spirit was in him. He knew that he was not alone going around the world like that. Amen? May that same consciousness rest upon your life. In the name of Jesus. It's a fit. He set his eyes on the man. There was a man who was the advisor. He was trying to stop the king from listening to the gospel. And Paul looked at him. Put us verse 10. Look at that. Verse 10. Paul looked at him and said, Oh, fool of all subtlety and of mischief, thou child of the devil. He's talking to the man. I love that. When you're full of the Holy Ghost, you can speak like that. May the Holy Spirit fill you this morning. Come as I'm talking, he's working on that. Hallelujah. I said, that, 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 I told you that water level, as you're listening to the word of God, the water level is rising. You came in the water levels at the ankle, but as you're listening to the word of God, it's going higher. By the time you're going out the door, you're ready to take the world. Hallelujah. He said, that child of the, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Verse 11. And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. He was blind. Peter spoke to the obstacle before him by the Holy Ghost. You face difficult situations and challenges, and you fall down crying, no, speak to it. Things are not working. Speak to it. It seems as if you can't go past that wall. Speak to it. Jesus said, if thou shalt say, whatsoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed. He didn't say you shall say to God. He said, say to the mountain. After you pray, you must speak. I'm going to say that again. I said, after you pray, you must speak. To it, he looked at the one who is trying to be an obstacle. He said, You blindness, amen. He did that full of the Holy Ghost. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. And we said, The Holy Spirit is what the paraclete, He goes alongside you wherever you are. Don't matter if you're in the north of the country, the south of the country, the east, the west, don't matter where you are, He's with you. Jesus, the, the prayer, the goal is that he may abide with you forever. Amen? Hallelujah. You are doing business is with you. See, your business will not be like everybody else's business. Oh, you're not listening to me. Because he has an inspiration that is not natural. May that favor be with you. In the name of Jesus. So he spoke to, he spoke to the obstacle. He spoke to the falsehood of the enemy. Because the enemy always tries to resist and obstruct. You know, somebody told me, told me that whatever the enemy is not fighting, don't, it don't mean too much in the spirit realm. If he's not fighting something, there's nothing that threatens him. If he threatens him, he's coming. I'm telling you the truth. Jesus fasted 40. He said, ah, what is he trying to do? He showed up. He wants to take over the world. 
every time you are making progress for the Lord, he will show up. Because he's scared of your victory. Because your victory is his demise. I'm telling you. But now, even if he shows up, you have the victory. I say he's not an issue. I told you the story about Smith Wigglesworth. I told you that. You see, all this stuff, if we understand the gospel, we, we don't fight the darkness. We, we, we embrace the light more. The more we embrace the light, darkness cannot stand. So when we say we put our foot down, darkness backs up. I told, I told you Smith Wigglesworth, the devil showed up in his room. Not in a dream. He wasn't having a vision. Physically. I don't know how that happened. It's in his book. And he was an, a tremendous apostle of faith. God used him mightily. He said he was in his sleep. And he heard his bed move. Literally. And he woke up. He opened his eyes. The devil was at the foot of the bed. You know, your spirit will let you know it's the devil. If you're spiritually sane. You don't need nobody to explain it. And he opened his eyes. He said, oh, it's you, devil. He went back to sleep. <laughs> Hallelujah. He didn't pray. He didn't bind the man. He slept. And the enemy left. Now, now that is very revealing. It tells you something. The enemy don't have the power that he says he has. If he had the power, he wouldn't have moved the bed. He would have killed the man in his sleep. But he could not. So he moved the bed to cause fear. Because he walks by fear. So whatever he wants to do, he throws fear first. If you embrace it, the door is open. Amen? The man opened his eyes and looked and said, oh, it's you. Listen, Jesus has overcome the enemy and he has given you the victory. I say you have the victory. I say you have the victory. Refuse to submit. I say you have the victory. In this life, you have the victory. In your business, you have the victory. In your health, you have the victory. In your job, you have the victory. Peter, fool of the Holy Ghost, say, you, child of the devil. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can show up anywhere and don't be afraid. Hallelujah. Come on now, say hallelujah. He set his eyes on the false prophet. Once you're filled with the Holy Ghost, your speech becomes supernatural. You speak, once you speak by faith, the word of God is in your, in your mouth is the same way the word of God is in the mouth of Jesus. Listen, what I'm, I'll say that again. If, you, if, you, if that word is in your heart and you speak it by faith with audacity, it's the same way like the word of God in the mouth of Jesus. Because he is in you and he speaks through you. Hallelujah. But I want to show you something real quick. I, know, I want to show you something real quick. Listen. Listen what the man's name was. If you are still there, can, can we, uh, we, we, passed, we passed where his name is mentioned. But, you know, I think it's verse 8 or verse 9. It, it, the man's name was called Elimas. Hmm? Listen, listen. His name was called Elimas. Okay. But Elimas is a sorcerer for his name, what well, interpretation, you know, we stood them. His name by interpretation means the sorcerer, but they'll interpret it as the wise man. So in the city, everybody calls him the wise man. Don't want to get into all of that. I told you the story when we went to a village one time to do crusade. I love those stories because when to do crusade, one week crusade, terrible village. We've been praying and praying and fasting. You know, but when did the first two days, nothing happened. You know, the preacher's preaching, nothing's happening. The whole air is tight. <laughs> That's when I knew that we are in something. This is, this is not normal. 
Nothing. Everybody's like, the whole night. They're showing up. But nobody's moving. Two days, nothing. Nobody's saying amen. So I'm like, what is this? So the next day, prayer, prayer, the whole day. Like, we must do something. Something must break in this place. <laughs> I come and say, something must break in this place. <laughs> See, you, we, refused to, we refused to give in. We prayed all day. And then God spoke to me. He said, go to the city center. There is a graveyard in the city center. Ha! He said, go there. And take anointing oil anointed. So I'm thinking, graveyard, oh my God. But I went there. I waited for it to get dark a little bit. <laughs> One thing I'm crazy or something. So I went there. I'm passing the graveyard in the name of. So I anointed the place. You know, did all, some other things in town that God told me to do. And we showed up in the meeting. That night, we showed up in the meeting. The, the wise man of the city. Of the village, the wise man of the village showed up physically. You haven't seen anything. He walked, everybody seated down. He walked in. I'm telling you, he walked in and walked around the aisle and came and stood in front and looking at everybody. Everybody they knew him in the city in the in the village. And they're scared of him. So I was like, oh. So I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, what kind of nonsense is this? The, the preacher is like, he just came and stood and imposing himself on everybody. I just woke up by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah! Listen, I woke up, I said, ow! You can't do that not naturally. He looked at me like, I said, out. He started going out. I showed him the door. And he walked out. That night, half of that room got saved. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. It's not a joke. We were leaving the room. People were still sleeping on the floor crying. Elimas was in town. But the Holy Ghost took care of him. Hallelujah. Listen, nothing can stand against you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And the rest of the five days, tremendous. But after we lived up, one week after, the story was still in town. You're not afraid because the Holy Ghost is in you and you're aware of it. Don't mind this kind of gospel. No, don't be, af don't be afraid. Once you are aware and conscious, the Holy Spirit with you, you go to work, you know that, ah, I got it. You, you do business, you say, ah, it will surely work. This is, you know, you can look at your business and say, in five years' time, we'll be calling millions in this town. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? It's not ordinary. Tell somebody it's not ordinary. There's a supernatural element. The devil called him wise man. Peter, John, Paul said, you're a child of the devil. Picked him out and the, and the man got saved. The, the king got saved. The man who was obstructing got out of the way. The king got saved. May your breakthrough show up. I said, may your breakthrough manifest. May anything that stands before you give way in the name of Jesus. And may your breakthrough manifest. The second point, I know we're out of time, we talk too much. <laughs> Acts chapter 16, verse 6. The second point is the Holy Spirit can restrict you from something good. A good thing is not necessarily a God thing. Uh, he can restrict you from something that is good. 
Now when, you know, verse, 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 verse 6, 16, verse 6. When they had gone throughout Phrygia and region of Galatia and were forbidden, listen, they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. What? I thought preaching the word was spiritual. Holy Spirit said, no. Don't preach there. He is the wisdom of God. He has all wisdom. If he said don't preach there, it means don't preach there. Even if preaching is a good thing. Some of you are in a good thing, but it's not a God thing. And a good thing can, can, can hinder you from entering the God thing. If they had entered Asia, the gospel would have taken a long time to enter Europe. The Holy Spirit had a plan. He is the strategist of God. I say your life will work out according to the plan of God by the Holy Ghost. Amen? He has the strategy. He has the strategy. Listen to that. He has the strategy. The Spirit of God prevented them. If you're walking by flesh, you'll be like, but I thought, I thought it was normal to preach. I thought it was a good thing. Holy Spirit has the blueprint. Amen? He has the blueprint of your life. And your life will unfold according to that. The life of your children will unfold according to that. Some of you are not answering because you don't have children. I'm speaking to you. Your life of your children. Man, your amen is weak. Well, you, I, I want vision to be activated. I say the lives of your children would unfold according to the plan. Some of you are shy. Ah, you are shy about having children. <laughs> you cannot receive the blessings of God being shy. I said the lives of your children will unfold according to the plan of God. Be like Jesus. Jesus said, don't say the harvest is in four months' time. The harvest is ripe. Jesus, if you look at the fields, it will say four months. But I'm telling you, it's ripe right now. Amen. The Holy Spirit told them not to. He blocked the path. So what I'm telling you is in whatever you do, watch for the Holy Spirit's guidance. He will tell you what to do. It's not complicated. You will hear, he will tell you. This thing is not hard. You'll be going to the, you know, you're in school, you're going to this building. He said, no, go this way. Not that anything is wrong with going that way. But it knows exactly where you need to be going. You're about to book a flight. This one is $200. This one is $201. You say, I want my $1. Oh, there's one that has transit time, lay over time, four hours. Ah, that's too long. And there's one with two hour layover. He said, that's the one. Holy Spirit said, four hour layover. With extra one dollar. So you don't know why you are spending one extra dollar and you are taking more time. But the Holy Spirit has somebody you have to meet in that airport in that four hour space of time. Are you seeing the strategy? If you are taking the two hour layover, you would have missed the person. He said, four hours, spend one dollar to save a soul. May your life be guided according to the plan of God. In the name of Jesus. He's the strategist. Hallelujah. Come and say, my life is coming out good. He will guide you into the will of God. What they were about to do was a good thing. Preach the gospel. Don't tell somebody, pay attention for the God thing. The God thing. The God thing. Some versions say verse 7. Look at verse 7. Look at verse, verse 7 real quick. Verse 7 real quick. We'll finish this on Wednesday. And after they were come to Mysia, 
they are said to go. They tried to go again to Bethany. They tried to go again. They, did, they tried to go. The Holy Spirit suffered. And he said, no. And listen to that. And now they stayed. And they went to sleep. Now in, this, in their sleep, Paul had a vision. And a man of Macedonia showed up. He dreamt and saw a man say, come on to us and help us. And the Holy Spirit said, that's where you're going. And they got up in the morning. They packed their things. Macedonia, that's Europe. And they went to Philippi. We're in the book of Philippians. It's because of this event. Philippians, Corinthians, all those. They happened because Paul was hindered by the Holy Spirit. So he could go that route. May your life be rerouted whenever you're going astray. And may you enter the path of God every time. In the name of Jesus. You have to pray some prayers like that sometimes. Say, Father, I really like to do this. But if it's not your will, stop it. Those are honest prayers. It's, I, if it's up to me, I really want to go this direction. But I'm giving you the liberty to stop. Make it, let it not work. If it's not your will. That's when you know that you have yielded your life. Because... It means if it's not God's way, it's going to fail. I remember coming to this country. I remember that. I wanted to come. I was excited, you know, to come to the U.S. I'm excited, praying. Oh, Father, thank you. Go to the U.S. And then I started feeling like, you know, but what if it's not God's will? What if I have to do something else? And I started praying and fasting. I said, Father, if this is, I'm going. I'm, doing, I'm following this step until I feel you stop. But while I'm doing, if this is not your will, I don't want this visa. I don't want it. Imagine that. Some of you are praying against the visa. Like, oh. But I was. I said, if it's not your will, don't want the visa. Don't want to fly thousands of miles away from the will of God. But I flew into the will of God. And look at the will of God for me. <laughs> I would have never met her. <laughs> <laughs> if it was just for this reason, hallelujah. I'm not saying you being here is not a reason too, but if it was just for this reason, bless the Lord. Thousands of miles is worth it. Look at you. You like those things. You guys, man. The Holy Spirit will direct you accordingly. But how do you know that direction? Someone said promptings. Someone said promptings and hesitations. Two things, promptings and hesitations. Because he may never speak anything. It's just a prompting or a hesitation. So you're trying to go some of you. You know, some of you know it, but you didn't know it was the Holy Ghost. Something is telling me not to, not to go this morning. Something is telling me. That hesitation. I told you the easiest way of the Holy Spirit leading you is the, blue, the green and the red light on the traffic light. Easiest way. You're coming, except you, uh, you see, the way you beat the red light, some of you are beating the Holy Ghost like that. <laughs> and you beat the Holy Ghost, another car is coming in front. You see, you can get into a shipwreck like that. You see, when you come to, you, you see that you, that stop, you, you know you don't have to go. It's the hesitation you feel on the inside. And you know that, ah, there's a red light somewhere. Either now you have to do a few things. You either have to go now, go pray more for clarity. Or you just say, no, I'm not going to do that until I hear further. And the green light is the peace. And the allowance to move forward. You know that you, 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 there's just there's just a there's just a joy attached to doing that thing. There's a freedom. That's the prompting. You know, I have to. I have to. I'm driving down the street. There are people begging by the road. If you want to give money to everybody, you will not be. You will not end. How are you going to know? You're going to give. You're going to just stay there, be giving money all day. 
But now I'm, 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 dry, I'm passing there every day. I'm seeing people beg. I don't give anything. And then one day I pass by. I went back and I, make, I made a U-turn. I drove and made a U-turn and came back and gave the man money. Because while I got there, I felt the prompting. Give him something. I didn't plan it. And I've been passing there all the time. I never thought of it. Until that moment. I got a prompting. Somebody can come for business. Everything looks well on paper. And you're a professional investor. You know everything looks good. We'll make money. But there's a hesitation. Don't do it. Give it time. You will save yourself a lot of heartache. And at times, something going to you. You don't really add up, but there's just a joy and a freedom to go with that. You'll be amazed. So they got the prompting. Say, we're going to Macedonia. Hallelujah. And they got the hesitation. No Asia right now. And those places were left for a particular time. Don't have time to get into all of that. Look at Paul's journeys. Let's round up right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I'm moving by the Holy Ghost. I'm moving by the leading of the Spirit. Let's do one more chapter. One more scripture so we can balance it out. It's chapter 17, verse 16. Look at that. Seventeen. Now while Paul waited, so Paul had had gone through that and Paul went ahead, he's waiting for the other disciples to, I mean, you know, Silas and the other ones who were with him to come because they had chased them out of town. So he went ahead and he's waiting for the others to come. Now while he waited, he was just waiting, he was just somewhere in Athens waiting for the others to come. He didn't have any plan. His spirit was stirred up in him. There was, a, there was an inspiration within. There's just something that rose up like, you know, just, just, I listen, you came to church just to do a few things here and, and something just, just walk along this, walk along this alley, walk along this or here, just walk along. There's a stirring. And then while you're walking along, the Spirit of God starts showing you things. Look at that. He got a stern in him, and then all of a sudden, he saw. He was in that city the whole time. He didn't see it until there was a stirring. And then he saw altars all over the place. Idolatry. Idolatry. See, those people leading him to something. And then the Holy Spirit showed him an altar that said, to the unknown God. Look at that. The door just opened. And he said, oh, is this unknown God I'm going to preach to them about? And then he told them, he said, look, when I was walking around your city, I saw so many altars, I realized you're very superstitious. There's so many altars in the city. But you have this altar with an inscription to the unknown God. Is the unknown God I've come to talk to you about? Look at that. And then he began to preach Jesus. Jesus is that unknown God. So... Look at that. There was a, someone said stirring. Someone said stirring. Now let's look at Job chapter 32 verse 8. We're ending there. Job 32 verse 8. I want to show you what that stirring is. It's an inspiration of the spirit. Look at that. Job 32. There is a spirit in man. Say there's a spirit in me. There is a spirit in man. And the stirring or the inspiration of the almighty. Give it him understanding. So all of a sudden you feel a stirring and this clarity. Because when the Holy Spirit wants to get your attention, He's in your spirit. He's within. He moves your spirit. He, he stirs it up. He stirs it up. And then you feel His emotion. You can feel the emotions of the spirit. You can look at things and tears come down your eyes. It's not your natural emotions. Those are the feelings of the spirit. You look at somebody, real, you, you know, Jesus, he looked at them and he was filled with compassion. 
It's not that I'm feeling sorry, the real suffering. No, it's not that. It's the feeling of the Spirit for the lost. And he entered into that feeling and felt it. And the moment he felt it, power was released to help them. May there be a stirring in your heart. May there be a stirring within you. Hallelujah. May there be a moving of the Spirit within you. The Holy Spirit is your best friend. He is the, if you know him, you've known the best person ever. Your life will operate accordingly. Stand on your feet this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to just take a few moments. Hallelujah. Again, we'll keep yielding ourselves. We'll keep yielding our lives. This is the life of the Christian. The, the walk with the Spirit. It's the life of the believer. Once you know him, now you're walking in God's path. Because he will show you the way. I told you on Wednesday. I told you on Wednesday. Another way, you know, Paul is in the, in the midst of a high hurricane. There's a storm in the sea. Everybody's scared of dying. They're scared that the boat is going to break. People are scared of losing their lives. Paul stood up and said, Fear not. He said, There shall be no loss of any man's life. For they stood by me last night. An angel of God. Listen to that. Why? How can you be in the middle of a hurricane? Some of you came from places where hurricanes are, are terrible. You know, how can you be in the middle of a hurricane, not at home, in the sea, while the hurricane is happening? And then you are telling people in that boat, do not be afraid. He said, no man shall die in this place. You see that? He said, because why? I got a leading from the Spirit of God. Amen? May your, our prayer this morning is that your life will be led like that. Everything you do will be a leading, a stirring, a moving. If it, takes, if, if it requires a, a holding back, you allow him to hold you back. Amen? If it takes him stopping you in, the, in your tracks, you allow him to do it so that the perfect will of God will come to pass. Your prayer this morning is that Father, let your will be done. Come on, raise your hands up this morning. Say, Holy Spirit, I yield to you. Let your will be done. Hallelujah. That which you want for me, may that be my reality. Hallelujah. That which you want concerning my life, may that be my reality. That which you want concerning my future, may that be my reality. That which you want concerning my family, my children, everything that you have designed concerning me, may that be my reality. If there's something I'm getting into that's not your will, let there be a holding back. Hallelujah. If there's something I'm not seeing and I need to walk into, let there be, oh God, a peace and an opening and a freedom and a, and a moving in that direction. Oh God, I yield myself to you. Come on, take one minute and pray. I yield myself to you. I yield my mind to you. I yield my business. I yield my job. I yield my family. I yield everything concerning me. Oh God. God. The Bible says you will never leave me nor forsake me. The Holy Spirit goes alongside us. Hallelujah. Always, 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 always. Your consciousness. Hallelujah. Father, give us consciousness. Give us that awareness of the Holy Spirit with us at every time, in every situation, in every circumstance. May there be that extraordinary supernatural aspect in our lives in our life that produce divine results and divine outcomes our life will cease to be ordinary will produce results that we will never be able to do any other way but by the spirit of god Jesus, i will pray the father he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because the world does not see him the world does not know him but you know him you know him for he's with you and he shall be in you right now he's in you say thank you holy spirit for living in me have your way have your way have, i want you to, i want us to acknowledge like like paul said i'm crucified with christ I don't live on my own anymore. But Christ lives in me. And Christ said, come on, say Christ lives in me. Father, live your life in me. And live your life through me. And let your name be glorified. Whatsoever is standing before you this morning. That is not the will of God. Whatsoever is standing before your family this morning, that is not the will of God. Whatsoever is standing before your business, whatsoever is standing before anything concerning any of your endeavors, 
in the name of Jesus, may it crumble right now. May it crumble right now. May it crumble right now. May the will of God come to pass. May the will of God prevail in your life, in everything concerning you. May heaven's blueprint manifest in every area of your life. In every area of your life. I hear God said to me, encourage your heart. There's people who are really down, who have really gone through trying time. God wants to let you know he sees your situation. He knows your circumstance. He's not left you alone. He's with you. And you're coming out of that with a shout in your mouth. In the name of Jesus. You're coming out victorious. In the name of Jesus. It is well with you. I say it is well with you. It is well with you. It is well with everything concerning you. In the name of Jesus. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise this morning. We did just two points or two or three points. We have three left. We'll continue on Wednesday. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you glory. As I was talking, the Holy Spirit has already ministered to you. That this what we'll call people out for prayer. And I want to just say this before we go. Friday prayer meeting, normally we have Friday prayer meetings one hour, seven to eight. You know, we, I talk with a few, you know, we'll, we'll put it out. But I, I'm proposing this. I think it's a good thing. We'll, you know, the leadership will talk about it. You know, I'm a, we, we, we're, su we're, we're suspending Friday prayer meetings moving forward. Why? Because we already have 5.30 prayers every day in the mornings. And the turnout has been good. Amen? We've had, every morning we have like 30 some people. You know, if it's low, like 28, you know, every morning. 5.30. 5 to 5.30. You know, we pray 5.30 to 6. 30 minutes. That's a church together. That's a good thing. So we're suspending Friday prayer meetings and we're, we're moving it like this. We're doing one Friday prayer event every month. The last Friday of every month, two hour prayer, just worship, praise, and prayer. And in that meeting, we'll have the opportunity to pray for, for people and minister to people. Amen? Meet your, pray for your needs and minister to people and, and all of that. So it's going to be a prayer event, you know, a prayer service, praise and worship and prayer. Amen? Hallelujah. So we will give you free time throughout the week so we don't take every Friday and take every early morning. Amen? I think that's the wisdom of God. And I'll tell you who suggested that. Amen? I think it's, I think it's a good thing. Come on, thank him one more time. So I'm a righteous man. My mind is sound. My body is healthy. My future is bright and glorious. I'm a righteous man. My mind is sound. My body is healthy. My future is bright and glorious. I'm a righteous man. My mind is sound. My body is healthy. My future is bright and it's glorious. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You believe that? Say amen. And amen. And amen. I've, I think the first prayer... Prayer Friday will be in May. It will not be this month. So we'll have enough time to prepare for that. Amen. And during that meeting, invite people. Invite people who are sick. We want to really use that meeting to pray for people and pray and really, you know, invite people and say, come be a part of it so that we use those two hours to really pray and worship and praise God. Amen. And we live with testimonies. Amen. Your week is blessed. The face of God is shining on you. Whatever you lay your hands to do will prosper. The favor of God is going with you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Do not forget the women's event. I will look for a way to get into it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I will say I came to study, but you can't stop me. It's well with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.